My name is Emily Ann Gray. I'm 24 years old. I qualified in the 400 freestyle and the 100 meter backstroke for the Rio Paralympics in September later this year, and I'll hopefully be going and making South Africa proud. How are your preparations for London compared to Rio? Well, for London, I had quite a bad rotator cuff um, injury in my shoulder, so the build up there was, was quite rough. Um, but leading up to Rio, I'm, I'm a much more experienced athlete. I mean, it's another four years of hard training I've done. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. And mainly just to kind of really enjoy it and really take in like all the emotions and the excitement and do what I, do what I love, which is, is racing. Mm -hmm. Do you have someone who's guided you for the last four years, mentored you? Um, you're obviously a lot more mature. You're not a 20 year old mm, racer, yeah. first time novice. You're now a more experienced athlete, as you rightfully say. How does how's that going to affect your, your Rio preparations? Well, um, my dad has always been there supporting me. I mean, from day one, he's always been there. I've had a few different coaches, but I'm now currently with um, Emile Debron in, in, at Tux, yeah. and. He's really been uh, a really strong uh, idol for me and he's helped me go through like really tough times and he's pushed me when he needs to push me and he steps back when he needs to step back. So he's been a really, really great coach to me so far. So um, I'm really looking forward to uh, representing him as well at the Paralympics. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about uh, kind of wearing this, the green and gold. Talk to me about walking out and, and facing a crowd of, uh, of thousands. What does that feel like for the average South African who, who can't comprehend that? It's it's really overwhelming and it's um, it's so humbling to, to walk out and, and you just hear the crowds and to know that you represent in your country and to know that your country is supporting you 100%. It's, it's really, really humbling and it's kind of like you just, you live there in that moment and you just kind of try to take it all in and remember every single second. Have you always dreamt of being a swimmer? Uh, funny enough, no. I was a middle distance runner okay. before I had cancer. So I, I really loved running and I loved the motion of it and the feeling. And um, yeah, that's when I was uh, diagnosed with osteosarcoma. So it's a bone cancer. Um, yeah, and then I went through chemotherapy and eventually they had to amputate my leg because the cancer just wasn't producing at all. Um, and that's kind of when swimming was introduced into my life and that's when I fell in love with swimming. Over and above the, the physical endurance and physical strength and technical ability, there's a, there's a serious mental aspect to what you guys do as well. Yeah, so the pressure is massive, especially obviously when you're competing at the Paralympics or Olympics. It, it, it really is massive. So it's important to constantly put yourself under that type of pressure and um, try to race internationally as much as you can. And then again, with the studies, being able to train your brain and then focus on different areas and put 100% focus into that one area. And to know that you just have to control the controllables and if something doesn't go your way or doesn't really happen exactly as you want it to, you just kind of need to regather and pull yourself together. How do you mimic and how do you prepare for the crowds, the uncontrollables you speak about, the competitors, etc., etc.? How do you prepare for that? Well, going, this would be my third Paralympics if I go. So I'm really, I'm used to those um, big crowds and unfortunately I would have liked to have raced some more international events uh, this year. But as I say, I'm, I'm experienced and I know exactly what to expect and, and how to deal with, with outcomes. Yeah, I just kind of started swimming to, to get back into life, like you said, just to kind of get my uh, feet back out there and to kind of um, experience what a normal life would be with a disability. Um, and going into an amputation, it was really so quick. I had literally a few minutes to decide and I made that decision to get an amputation. Um, it wasn't my parents or my doctors, it was me. And literally the next day I was going into the operating room. So it all happened really quickly, but also really slowly. Um, yeah, and then I started at Mandeville, which is a sports club for the physically disabled in Joburg. And there I saw some people with other disabilities. And, you know, I realized, okay, well, I'm not the only person in this world with a disability. Because at that time, you do feel like that. Um, so, yeah, I saw others and I played some uh, basket, wheelchair basketball and swimming and other sports. So, 
it kind of um, opened my eyes to a whole new world that I'd never seen, seen before at the age of 12. Um, yeah, and that kind of really gave me the confidence and it, it built relationships with, with other people who had disabilities. When I first started swimming, Natalie the toy was a massive idol of mine. Um, she also obviously has a leg amputated, so I could really relate to her. And I remember chatting to her first, I was at Virgin Active, and she signed an autograph for me and that was really inspiring and it was amazing to have an idol like that and we then competed against each other because we were in the same category, S9.